Hi there! In this video we will discuss how to choose the reference dataset. And let us start from the quick reminder on why we use the reference dataset in the first place. There are a lot of things where we can benefit from using reference datasets to get after-generated test conditions, for example for data quality checks like feature ranges, share of nulls, etc., for model quality checks like model accuracy, precision, etc., and the idea here is that instead of setting up all those test conditions ourselves, we can just use the reference dataset, derive all those conditions from the reference dataset automatically, for instance like what was the share of missing values from our reference dataset, and then compare our new batches of data with those conditions, like if in the reference dataset we had share of missing values equal to 10%, then in our new batches of data it should be not much more than 10%, right? Or even not much less than 10%, because if out of the blue the share of missing values decreased, it also can be a signal of some issues, right? So that's the idea. Together with after-generated test conditions, we can benefit from the reference dataset by detecting training series Q, like we can provide a baseline to detect changes between the training data and production data. And we can detect uh, data and prediction drift, because we can compare the distributions of training data and models output with the distributions from the reference dataset as well. So there are quite a lot of different use cases which we can use to benefit from reference dataset and this is why sometimes it makes sense to have not a single but several reference datasets. Let's explore this idea in more details. So I want to say what is a reference dataset, what is a good reference dataset and what doesn't suit to be a reference dataset. So it's important to understand that the reference dataset is not the same as the training dataset. Well, I have to say that sometimes it makes sense to choose training dataset for some particular checks, but in general that's not a good idea. And it's also not a golden dataset, which we discussed previously, because it just serves for the different purpose. Well, what is the good reference dataset? It is the selected data which considers cycles and seasonality. So this is why you might have several reference datasets if you have several cycles. For example, yearly cycle, weekly cycle and maybe quarterly cycle, right? In this case it makes sense to come up with three, at least three different reference datasets. It should have large enough data so that you can really derive some statistics from those data and if you include only like five rows in your reference dataset, you cannot really derive any statistics from it. And also, it should reflect realistic data patterns. Like it's, this is why it's not like idealistic dataset, that the real reference data. For instance, in metallurgy, we can work with some sensors data. In this case, some sensors can be broken for some short or longer period of time and we will have some missing values coming out of those sensors. It's important to include such cases into your reference dataset so that you can automatically compare new batch of data with this reference dataset and for example compare share of missing values. And if out of a sudden you see that the share of missing values is like highly increased or highly decreased compared to what you had in your reference data, you can send an alert and go and do the bugging. This is why it's quite important to analyze your historical data prior to create your reference dataset or maybe come up with the several reference datasets as well. The next question is, do you always need to have a reference dataset? And the answer is actually no. You do need to have reference dataset if you want to compare distributions and you use metrics like, for instance, Wasserstein distance, right? So that you need to have two distributions. But if you use some statistical tests, I mean one sample statistical tests, then you can actually live without this reference dataset. But to compare two distributions with help of two sample statistical tests or distance methods, you need to have this reference data. For everything else, it's just an option, so you can literally manually specify all test conditions for each individual test, and if that's what you want to do, because for example you have limited amount of columns and you understand the meaning of each column and what is the expected 
range values and other descriptive statistics, you can totally do that. So it's a great hack because quite few engineers really like to write test conditions, but that's only an option. How about training data? When we can use training data set as the reference? It's kind of okay if we do not have anything else and we want to derive automatically test conditions like feature types and data scheme, feature ranges, value lists for categorical features. Maybe we want to automatically derive feature correlations from the training data to compare with the feature correlations in new batch of data or detect training theorem skew. So again, if that's the only data set you have an access to, you can use it for such type of checks. But it's non-optimal if you want to, for example, generate some expectations about model quality, because we expect to see the model quality on top of the training data set quite higher than on top of the batches of new data, right? And same goes to things like share of missing values, uh, because we pre-process training data set quite, quite often, right? And it's not a good base even for a drift detection. Consider the holdout validation data instead or the previous successful batch of data. Reference dataset for data drift detection is quite important and we need to make sure that we use the representative data and that captures typical distributions and variations in the data. This is why we need to decide how we are going to compare the data, whether we are going to compare it monthly like previous months with the next month, right? In this case, the reference data set is this previous month of data. Maybe we want to do it weekly, maybe daily. It's always good to first check the historical data and apply different strategies for historical data, then analyze the outcomes and decide what types of reference data set you are going to reuse in your production monitoring. You have quite a lot of choices to make. Well, first of all, what will be our reference data, so what we compare against. You have quite a lot of options here, like training data, which is indeed not recommended, and I'm sorry for saying it again and again, but that's really important. We can use validation data or data from previous production batch. We need to decide on the size of current data and reference data. What batch do we use to perform our comparison? And we can have several ones like daily and weekly or daily and yearly or maybe something else depending on the amount of objects we include in our reference and current data. But this decision should be made. And finally, you might want to like update our reference data. I mean, you can definitely have a static reference data, which we once created and use, for instance, till the end of the year or even longer. Or we can have a moving reference like sliding window, which we update, like on a weekly basis or a monthly basis. Again, it's always good to apply the strategy first on historical data and then decide whether it works for you or not. So it's all ultimately depends on the assumption. What data do you expect to be similar, right? And when you are in that, do take a look at historical data. That always helps to recreate the algorithm, the approach you are going to use in production on top of historical data, of course, under the assumption that things did not change drastically and see what will be the outcome. Do you miss a lot of important issues? Do you get a lot of false alerts? All these outcomes will help you to tune the approach and then start using it with your production data. We have a very nice tutorial on the historical data drift evaluation and if you are interested in like selecting the right reference data set or reference data sets with help of historical data, please take a look. We have a very nice code example there as well. As we discussed before, multiple references often make sense, so do not hesitate to have multiple comparison windows like daily, weekly, maybe previous months with the same months, or even all production data to training data to catch some gradual changes. The sampling is also a good question because we need to figure out whether we want to have the whole batch of data or we prefer to do sampling. Well, if your dataset large enough, sampling is a good idea because you don't really miss a lot of information if you use sample data instead of the whole dataset. 
Actually, all the statistical tests were made to work as samples, right? So uh, if you have enough data, you can go for a random sampling strategy or stratified sampling strategy if you have some imbalances in your data and use the samples instead of the whole data set. At least you will save some computational resources and potentially you will be able to get the results faster. Sampling works great for drift detection. But if you look for data quality anomalies on the level of individual objects like specific missing values, outliers or duplicates, then sampling can disguise it. If you look for a statistical distribution shift, sampling is totally fine. So make sure that you understand what kind of analysis you want to perform before deciding on sampling. To sum up, there is no universal reference dataset, right? You need to choose the reference dataset under your expectations of similarity to current dataset. This is very case specific. It also depends on what types of checks or tests or measurements you want to implement with help of the reference dataset. It's usually best to pick up holdout validation data over the training data uh, in data drift detection, right? And generally, using training data as the reference data set will be very well curated. It's important to understand that training data has quite a lot of differences compared to the current batch of data, and you need to decide what type of checks you're willing to perform having the training data set as the reference data. When you decide on the reference data set or reference data sets, consider seasonality. It's quite important to avoid cases when you, for instance, compare the Friday data versus Saturday data and detect data drift. When in doubt, look at historical data. This is a very valuable source of information. Well, that's all I wanted to share with you in this video. I hope it makes sense and now you have quite a good understanding on what reference dataset is and how to select it. And in our next video, we are going to discuss custom metrics for monitoring.